Today we are going to play around with the Creedmoor Sports TRX 925 Precision Reloading Scale. Now this was sent over to me to play with. Full disclosure, I did not pay for this particular unit. Uh, also, full disclosure, this isn't a unit that um, normally would fit into my reloading because I do have uh, a different scale, in all honesty, that I've been using, uh, as you know. And uh, But I've always sat there and thought, well, is there a place for a second scale on my reloading bench? And I know a lot of people out there have multiple scales for different uh, purposes. Um, I have used my primary scale, which happens to be about twice what this costs. Uh, you know, they run 600 plus and, and I've used some that are upwards of 12 or 1500. Uh, but it's not always convenient. They're bigger. Uh, and I've always wondered, is there a place for one of these or something this size on my reloading bench for times where I do want to sort primers or if I'm sorting out bullets for one purpose or another, or if I'm doing some kind of test, um, you know, in all fairness, I normally wouldn't hand trickle onto a scale like this, but I know there are a ton of people out there who do. And I know that not everybody uses an automated or wants an automated powder system. And that's where a scale like this really comes into play. Now, there are other scales out there that people use that are, you know, let's be honest, anywhere from $40 to a couple hundred dollars. And I think most people would agree they suffer from the same problems, either lack of repeatability, uh, lack of accuracy, you know, different things like that, uh, where it's sort of been frustrating for people to use especially when it comes to uh, something as important as weighing your powder. Now, the Creedmoor company here, they have uh, gone ahead and this is sort of built around their specs, something that makes this unusual compared to most scales, even you know ones that are twice as much, is that this will actually go to one one hundredth instead of going in steps of two one hundredths. And for some people that can make a big difference, especially if you're working with things like ball powders, flake powders, and things like that. So let's get this fired up. I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough just based on the manual for you, just to give you a quick idea of how it works. And then I'm just gonna tell you how it sorta of has fit into my reloading uh, and why I am actually enjoying having this around. So first thing is we're gonna go ahead and fire this up. We're gonna turn it on. Now anytime it's been turned off and then turned back on, it is going to ask you to uh, recalibrate it. Now it does come with three calibration weights. It's gonna ask for calibration one, which is the uh, two, so it's gonna flash two gram. We're gonna put the two gram on here. Yes, I know I should wipe it off with alcohol and yes, I should be wearing gloves, but that's okay. We're gonna put it on now. It's automatically calibrating. When it goes solid to two grams, that means that it is now good to go. And now it's going to tell me it wants the next one, which is calibration weight two, which is the 10 gram. It's calibrating. It's gone solid, so we can go ahead and take that one off. And now it's gonna ask for the last calibration weight, which is 50. Now the scale will go up to a 925 grains or 60 grams, your choice. Uh, now that it flashes this, it is ready to go. If I pull this off, you'll see it's gonna fall back down to zero. I can certainly put on the powder scale and then tear that out. One of the first things that people have asked, and it's come up on the forums quite a bit, is how does this hold zero? Well, let me tell you, I've had this for almost a month now, and I've been playing around with it, and uh, I literally left it on for weeks at a time. So uh, one test, I left it on for about a week with just the pan on here zeroed. I did use their uh, dust shield here, or air shield, so that it was on, and then I put a little piece of painter's tape over the top just so that there was nothing that could affect it. I will tell you, after one week, uh, it absolutely held zero grains. Now, uh, there is some uh, theory that because it uses an auto zero system that it's constantly correcting inside, and I suppose there is some truth to that, but the point being is that there was no visible drift on the scale after a week. Now I also went ahead and zeroed it and then put a weight in it. I used, I believe the 10 gram if I remember right. And I left that sit for a week. Uh, again, I came back after a week and it was 10 grams. Now, during those particular weeks of testing, 
Uh, there might have been times in the morning or afternoon because I am in a garage. Uh, the garage does, you know, I open my garage door, I close my garage door, even in a, in a, you know, relatively, you know, airtight environment like this. Uh, you know, we've had temperature swings, we've had humidity swings and a garage is not the best environment, let's be honest, for a digital scale like this. However, that being said, throughout the entire week, by the end of it, uh, it still maintained a zero drift either with weight or at a zero weight. And I thought that was pretty good because I'll be honest, my $600 scale can't do that. Um, I still get some visible drift after a week or two if I do the same test. So I did find that pretty interesting that this held. Now it is a strain gauge for 320 or 350 bucks. Um, you know, it is a strain gauge, but it does appear to be a pretty good one. Um, I'm not a scientist. I, I don't get into the, uh, you know, the mechanics of this stuff, but, uh, Compared to other scales I have used that have had problems, uh, this one doesn't appear to exhibit any of them. Uh, I Again, I'm going to go through the book here real quick just to show you a couple things and then we kind of talk about what I've done with this. So the book is really simple. It's going to walk you through you know, how, to, how to do your initial setup. Uh, one thing about the windshield that's really nice is that it's actually grooved right here. So when you assemble it, it's not going to fall apart on you. Um, it actually snaps together here uh, and you can pick it up and nothing's going to come apart on you. The lid does fit real nicely. Uh, I did plenty of work uh, either in this configuration or if you want to, you can pull out the, the front window here. So you can certainly do this if you want to have a little bit of protection around or you could ultimately have just an open front or a side front. The way this thing's made, it allows for a lot of flexibility, which again, I thought was pretty good. Um, they could have definitely cheaped out on this on this windscreen here, and uh, they didn't. So it fits very nice. There's little recesses here. All right. So what are some of the things that this can do? Well, I'm just going to show you here. Um, when it comes to uh, some of the options, you can turn the backlight on and off. Great. And that's, you know, kind of should be expected. Uh, you can change the units. So if I do go into the units, you'll see here they have really good instructions. You have ounces, you have carats, uh, you have pounds, uh, teal, which to be honest, I've never used, uh, grams, and of course, grains. And a lot of the scales that you know we use in reloading are gonna have those options. So if you're used to one in particular, that's great. I know when I sort primers, um, I do it by, um, a different method than grains and you'll see that here in a minute uh, and so I like having the option uh, counting so it does some other modes which are pretty cool and uh, I can also show you in a minute here uh, what we're looking at as far as how it counts keep in mind that if you're going to use the count feature it's still bound by the uh, total available weight which is going to be about 60 grams or 900 grains so you're not going to be able to count a bunch of you know 180 grain bullets uh, but for doing things like counting primers, it was fantastic. You know, I measured out 600 primers on it and then I was able to count each group and get a really good idea within typically one primer of where that was going to be. Uh, and, you know, that made it pretty useful. If you're counting smaller things, the counting function works great. Now, something that's really nice is that it, ha it does have this, you know, female RS-232 port, which is very similar to a lot of the more expensive scales. This does have, and you can see right here, they tell you it's got a printing function. Now, somebody's going to have to figure out how to develop that, and it's going to take a different uh, connector, but the fact that you have a $350 scale that has the potential for add-ons in the future is very cool. In fact, there's at least one guy that I've watched on YouTube who has connected his computer to this already with a simple COM port, and, uh, you know, all of his data when he weighs goes right into an Excel spreadsheet for him when he's doing testing. So the capabilities are there for people to kind of homebrew different things with this scale. And again, it's not really something you see on scales at this price point or below. So I really like that they went through and thought that one out because... Again, I, I really see the potential for people to, um, you know, either make their own or adapt different things to this particular scale. And for the money, I think that would be a heck of a bargain. Uh, aside from that, uh, you know, they just have your typical, you know, how to care for it, um, how to ensure that if you're getting scale drifts because of something, you can slow, um, you can do, you know, do different speeds of speed one and speed two. But again, I really wasn't seeing that. You know, I saw a little bit of maybe humidity or temperature swings that would move it just a hair. 
otherwise it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. I did quite a few tests against my uh, $600 scale in terms of weighing out charges and then measuring them back and forth. And it was actually pretty fun to go back to this because from a read from a readout standpoint, this is actually more accurate than my $600 scale, which only goes in two one hundredth steps. Because this goes in one one hundredth, I was actually you know able to see where that was rounding up and down. So that was kind of interesting to see as well. So let's just do a couple simple things again. Um, you know, there's only so much that you can really show off with a scale because at the end of the day, it weighs things. So uh, we're just going to throw a little bit of powder in it here. So like there's, what do we got? 17.04 grains. Uh, let me put the shield on here just to help a little bit. So we're at 17.01 without anything affecting it from the sides and even my breathing on it here. So let's drop one kernel. So I have just, see just one kernel here. So there you go, it went from 0.01 to 2 to 3. And then if I drop another one, let's see. Especially Reloader 16, which is what this is, is pretty inconsistent with its grain size or, or kernel size. So that one went up three. So you can see it's, it's, it's very interesting um, when you're looking at hundredth kernel or hundredth grain increments here uh, instead of just two one hundredths that are rounding up or down. And look, at the end of the day, does that, you know, does that fraction of a hundredth count? Uh, probably not. It's not really going to be something that you see on paper. But uh, the fact that you can see it, I think, makes for some interesting reading on this. So there you go. That's, you know, putting powder on it. Now, let me show you just a couple things that I did in terms of sorting primers before I went to Southwest Nationals and then also how I counted those bins of primers. So first off, this is me using the scale, uh, just kind of a snippet of another video I did showing how uh, I sorted primers on this scale. Uh, here is an example of using the Creedmoor scale for sorting my primers. Uh, I happen to use the pound uh, units because I find it's a faster, easier way to put them into larger groups, which is all I'm after. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just really looking to sort out ones that are really on the high end or the low end. Uh, in this case, the difference between 76 and 78 is just over a tenth of a grain. And I think that's a pretty meaningful number when you look at differentiating them. So uh, I'm good with these uh, as they are. And this scale makes it really easy. Now, if I wanted to, I could certainly do this in grams or grains or carrots or whatever else I wanted to. If I wanted to find a number that works for me or units that work for me. Uh, again, I just like using pounds because it helps me just put them in simple steps. Uh, I do keep the powder pan in there only because it keeps the primer from rolling around and it keeps my primers pretty much centered up on the uh, on the um, platen there. So that is just another great use for the Creedmoor scale. When I'm done sorting these, which is going to be a couple hours here, because um, I'm doing a thousand of them, but when I'm done sorting them, I'm also going to show you how to use this scale uh, with its built-in counting function to see how many primers are on each uh, in each cup. So uh, we'll come back here in a minute. I'll show you that. Okay. So you saw how I was able to very easily put the primers on and off. Uh, it gave a very clean readout. Again, because of how I do it, I look for, you know, it's an easy number to read every time. And I only ended up with five bins, uh, almost nothing on the up and down. But in the middle, there was quite a, quite a decent, uh, you know, sort of a bell curve there. Uh, but this made for very fast work of that. And I actually found that having the scale that was a little bit smaller, a little more accessible, you know, it was actually kind of nice to use. Um, so again, having a second scale on your bench, if it is something you're looking for, uh, it does have, to me, kind of the right size. It's not too small that it's sort of a toy. Uh, it's big enough that it gives out good readings, and I was really happy with it. Let me show you how I then took those bins of primers and counted them very quickly uh, so that I could figure out uh, if I had enough primers for loading different things for Southwest National. So here you go. So I have primers sorted, and, and it could be anything. Uh, the scale, honestly, because it only goes to 925 grains, it's not really great for counting uh, things like bullets because they're so heavy. But for things like primers, this is really great. So I want to know how many I have in any, any one cup. 
Now, I sorted 600 primers. I can obviously figure out that the majority of them are in this cup. And, you know, the vast majority, you know, probably 98% of them are in these two cups. But it is important for me to know how many are in this cup because I need roughly 350 uh, primers for uh, my record rounds and ciders uh, at the match. And then I need about another 80 rounds for practice. Now, uh, my practice rounds don't necessarily have to be the same primer. I'm just looking for consistent ignition. Uh, so I'll probably end up having to dip into this cup uh, at some point, but it would be nice to know. So here's what we're gonna do with this scale. Now I could put some primers on here. I could see how many 10 or 20 weigh. I could weigh the whole cup, I can do the math. Honestly, that's a pretty easy way to do it. Uh, but it does have a count function so that if I come in here and hold down the mode button, and actually before I do that, I forgot, we're gonna put a cup on here and we're going to tear it out. Okay, cause that's a lot of weight. All right, now we're gonna hold down on the mode button and then the menu comes up. It's on unit, we're gonna hit mode again and go to count and then hit tear. And now it's going to ask us to put 10 pieces in the cup. There's 10, and then we're gonna hit tear. All right, and so now if I put my empty cup on there, it's gonna say zero pieces. And this is more than 900 uh, grains. I just know it is because of the feel of it. So we're gonna put, we're probably gonna break this up into a couple batches. So let's just take this one. So there's 121, whoops. So there's uh, 121 primers. And I wanna use the same cup just in case there's any variance in it. And then we're gonna get down to zero pieces again. And we're gonna pour some more in. Okay. And 132. All right, let's dump that out. And here's the rest of them. So those are all of my 76s, which was the highest count. So that's 103, all right? So I just wrote down those three. Uh, so I've got five, six, five. I've got 356 primers in there. So that is perfect. Um, that actually is exactly what I need uh, for that. Now, if I wanted to, uh, just to see, let's just see how exact this is. So we had 356, let me make a note here. All right, so for the 76, uh, there's 356 primers counted. For 77, I don't know if I can measure them all in one batch or not. We're gonna find out here. Nope, just a little bit too much. Hundred and sixty-seven. Okay. So one hundred and sixty-seven plus twenty-one, so one hundred and eighty-eight. Okay. Now the rest of these we should be able to do in one batch. Here's the seventy-eights. So 78, it says there's 16 of them. The 75s, there's 42, okay. And even though, yes, I can actually count how many two is, I wanna see, it says there's two, all right. So 74, there is two. All right, now, just for fun, let's see. Let's just see where this adds up. So 356 plus 188 plus 16 plus 42 plus two. So 604, that's not too bad given how light everything is. Um, and I know this is exactly 600 primers because I opened six packages. Uh, so you know what, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, I can be plus or minus four 
over 600 primers, uh, especially when you're dealing with uh, you know these larger weights. There's always a chance it's going to plus or minus one primer just on how it rounds up. So um, I'm actually really happy with that. So anyway, that shows you how to use this scale if you want to count something like primers. But now I'm left really confident that I have exactly, or actually just a hair more primers than I need for all of my record rounds. And then I've got 188 over here, so that's plenty. Uh, and then the rest, you know, I'm not even, like these won't even count for anything. They're just gonna be blow offs later when I get back from uh, Southwest. So um, anyway, uh, there's that part of the scale. Okay, so there you go. That shows you how I used the count function uh, in order to uh, just quickly figure out if I had enough primers for my record matches and then my practices and stuff like that. Uh, you know, obviously there's other ways that you can do it and I talk about that in the video, but having that count function gives you a real number real fast and I think that that is a big benefit for a scale like this. Now, repeatability is something that's always going to come up. Uh, you know, I've got greasy fingers here. I'm going to, just for the sake of doing this test, uh, I am going to put on a glove and I am going to put the windscreen on. Okay, and then I'm going to get an alcohol pad here and I'm just going to use the 10 gram weight. Okay. And we're just gonna let the alcohol evaporate. So give this a second here. I'm just gonna finish drying it with a compressed air. All right, so here we go. We are completely teared out. We'll just do it one more time. We're going to put this on. I'll just leave it in grains. It doesn't really matter. So 154.31. Okay. Now we're going to take this off. We're going to let it zero back. One fifty four thirty one. Oh, I affected it there a little bit. Okay. There you go. One fifty four thirty one. We'll let it zero out. I did this a whole bunch when I first started playing with it, and I was actually pretty impressed with how well it repeated itself with known charges. One fifty four thirty one. And I mean, I can do this all day with it. Um, I, to be fair, I kind of thought this was going to be a cheap scale. Uh, I'm just so used to dealing with expensive uh, lab grade electronic scales that I didn't think something, um, you know, below that was going to hold accuracy, hold repeatability, and, and keep going uh, like this one has. And I think that's really cool. So there you go, 154.31. So, I mean, I could do this all day long with this thing. Um, the point being is that it's going to repeatably weigh what you need it to. Um, I did it with powder charges. I've done it with the weights. You know, I did a bunch of different testing with it. And everything indicates that this does exactly what people have been asking for in a price point like this. You know, I, I don't know what else to tell you about it because, again, it's a scale. It's going to weigh things. But I think that for the money, if you want something that you can hand trickle on to, if you're looking for something that is going to give you very precise um, uh, readability on the actual scale, uh, having that one t one one hundredth uh, capability instead of rounding up to two one hundredths is a big benefit for people. And the fact that it has that COM port in the back leads to potentially some future expansion by who knows anybody really. Um, and like I said, I've seen people already use it by tying it into their computer. So I think it's a lot of scale for the money. I think it's going to fill a really good niche. And you know, that's about all I can say about it. I, I, I know it sounds weird because, yeah, I know I, they sent it to me and I'm not saying anything bad about it. I don't have anything bad to say about it because it does exactly what they said it would. It, it repeats itself. It has a great zero function. It has literally, I can't find really any drift in it. All I can find is temperature or environmental drift, which is going to happen to any scale. Um, but the fact that I went literally a week or two at a time, uh, in fact, I went to Southwest Nationals, left it on with weight, came back. It was exactly where I left it. You know, that just tells me that it's a great scale for the money. 
I'm sure there's things that you could pick apart on it. You know, everybody wishes things were cheaper these days. Uh, maybe people wish it weighed more. Like, I mean, I guess there's things that you could complain about. But for what they say it'll do, for the features that it offers, all I can tell you is it does what they promise it does. And I think they met a really good price point with it. So take it for what it is. Uh, if you're in the market for a, you know, mid-priced or lower-priced uh, digital scale to do any number of functions on, I would at least give the Creedmoor Sports a try. So there you go. I hope that helps you guys out. I know there's a lot of people who have been asking about this scale and what it can do. If you want to see me do something else with this scale or you don't think that I was objective enough, feel free to blow me up in the comments and I will do whatever you want with this scale. So I uh, hope you guys have a good one. We'll talk later. See ya.